I want you to give the listeners, especially the audio listeners of the podcast, a description of what the Leviathan looks like. Cool. Um, yeah, so um, the configuration we're really kind of playing around with most, there's two possible ones. This is the fun thing about being this early is we're still dialing in what it's going to look like. But the, the one that we've kind of shown the most, imagine two uh, Boeing 777s aircrafts with a giant wing section spanning between them and then tandem wings on the outside of it. So it almost looks like a flying catamaran. Um, and the reasons behind that is because it gives us a large amount of internal volume and it gives us a very large central wing section to provide a whole lot of um, basically interaction with the ground effect. It mm. means that we'll be able to be much higher off the water, uh, which makes it safer for going over um, for going over waves, but it looks very much like an aircraft. Yeah. Uh, whenever, whenever I tell this to people, their first thought is usually like blimps or like a hovercraft with a skirt or something like <laughs> that. Usually, what people think of, and then I show them pictures and renders, and like, oh, it's just a cool, crazy looking aircraft. I'm like, yes, that's yeah. exactly what it is. But it's about like when you add up all of like the volume and the size of it, it's about twice the size of a 747 but it takes up about the same kind of area as one. So it's just more efficient as far as like how much material you can shove inside of it. Cool. The the Russian guy that you were talking about earlier on, Alex, Alexiov? Alexiov. Alexiov. Yeah. Um, you said he built, it basically took a boat and put some wings on it. Yeah. Right? So uh, in terms of your design, did you try to incorporate like aspects? Of, well, obviously you talk about having, it's like a plane. But did you try to incorporate aspects from ships or boats into it also? Yeah. So the the lower part of the hull is going to have to be like we're trying to make it as little optimized for water travel as possible. And the way we're going to be doing that is by incorporating hydrofoils to act as our landing gear, basically. So we'll use hydrofoils for high speed taxi. So basically, once we get out of harbor to where we don't have to worry about any kind of speed limits, uh, it'll very quickly be able to get up onto the hydrofoils, um, probably at less than 15 miles per hour is kind of really what we're targeting, which means we can really streamline the lower hull mostly for aerodynamic operations as opposed to hydrodynamic. So mm -hmm. optimizing it to go through air as opposed to water. Um, then we can use the hydrofoils to basically travel very quickly out to where we're going to do takeoff and landing operations because we want to do that ideally kind of far away from where there's lots of surface traffic just to make that safe. Um, then get out to that area, accelerate up to basically the maximum speed of hydrofoils, which is about 60 knots. And that's one of the things that we're really incorporating into the design is making sure that like using the blown wing system and some other fun uh, aerodynamic tricks to get our takeoff speed to match up with that maximum speed of the hydrofoils so that when it actually takes off, it won't like take off like most people normally think of as a, a like an aircraft doing. It'll literally like if you're watching it, it'll be going along and you'll just suddenly see the hydrofoils retract up out of the water and it'll keep going along at that same height. So it'll mm. look really kind of crazy when it does that assuming we can pull everything off how we think it will. Um, but yeah, we very much came from the side of designing essentially an aircraft to maximize ground effect and then just incorporating the minimum amounts of boat technology to be able to land on the water, take off on the water and kind of do whatever water-based operations we need.